Hi, it's Grace. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to another Vlogmas vlog. So, starting a new Vlogmas vlog today and I'm actually going to make this one a themed reading vlog because I have missed my little themed reading vlogs and this is one I've wanted to do for a while. And so, basically, in this vlog, I'm going to be trying to find a new favourite author or multiple new favourite authors, but by that I don't mean that I'm going to be reading authors that I've never read from before. I am a neurotic person who only classes authors as my favourite authors if I have read three novels that I've absolutely loved so I would say like a 4.5 to a 5 and then they get to go on my official favourite authors list. As I say I am a neurotic person. I'll link my current top 10 favourite authors video down below. Uh, I think currently there's like 11 on there so I don't really know why I did a top 10 in terms of authors I've read three books from that I've absolutely loved uh, but I realised I've now got like another few contenders. I think currently we're on like four authors who possibly could make it but in terms of the books that I have access to I've got three, two that I'm definitely going to be reading in this video to see if two authors can make it onto the list and one that I will read if I have time but it is vlogmas, I am filming a lot of videos, posting a lot of content so if I don't have time, I don't have time. So let's get into the book. The one that's a maybe I'll start with. So in November, I read Grief is a Thing with Feathers by Max Porter and gave five stars. And in 2019, I read Lani by Max Porter and gave it five stars. And he has another book, which is The Death of Francis Bacon that I have not read, um, but it is on script and it's really, really short. And so I am scared of that one. I think that will be a no because it's all about like, visual art and I hate reading about visual art but that's an option he is an author who I absolutely adored the other two novels if I adore that one he'll be up there on the list the other two I have physically and they're the ones I'm definitely going to read and I've been so excited to read both of these books I think that's kind of one of the reasons that I was like oh, we can do a themed reading vlog midweek for vlogmas of course we can so the first one I hauled recently is Where the Lion Bleeds by Jasmine Ward I have actually read three books by Jasmine Ward and loved them but one was her memoir so I guess maybe she's already up there but I haven't read three novels, so, you know, got to got to stick to the T's and C's. So Where the Lion Bleeds is actually Jasmine Ward's debut novel, and her other two novels, Salvage the Bones and Thing Unburied Sitting, I read both of them this year. So also I just think it's quite fun to, like, complete her novels in a year, because I am obsessed with her, and I actually think she is, depending how this book goes, going to be one of my, like, all-time, I'm talking, like, top five, if I can say that, favourite authors because I've been blown away by Sing and Buried Sing and Salvage the Bones. Both were absolute five star reads, just like took my breath away. Her writing, her settings, I'm obsessed. And this beautiful little copy that I picked up in America is her debut novel and I think it's interesting. I might have even read them backwards. I think all three of the novels are part of this like Boy Sauvage um, series, which is like the town that she sets them in. I'm not sure if it's fictional or not. In Mississippi, Jasmine Woods from Mississippi. I love reading books about the South. Also, this particular novel, Where the Lion Bleeds, is about twin brothers. And I love books about twins. And it follows them over the course of a summer, I think. And Salvage the Bones also, and maybe Sing a Buried Sing, was set across like a summer. And she writes summer so well and family so well. And yeah, I can't wait to read this. And I'm pretty darn sure I'm going to love it. But she has to prove herself. And the second book that I'm definitely going to be reading for this video is Prep by Curtis Sittenfeld. So I read... Rodham by Curtis Sittenfeld last December and absolutely loved it. It was my first Curtis Sittenfeld, gave it five stars. I know other people don't like that book. I don't care. I absolutely loved it. So gossipy, so salacious, so well written. And then I read American Wife by Curtis Sittenfeld in February, which is another kind of like political reimagining book. So Rodham reimagines the life of Hillary Rodham Clinton, American Wife reimagines the life of Laura Bush, but gives her a different name. And I adored that book as well. So underrated, just so, she just does character studies so well. She does like the mundane in the most interesting way. I could just sit and read her books forever. I love them. Um, and so I picked up Prep. This is not one of the President's Wife series, not that that's what they're called, but I'm really interested to read it. It is about a, like boarding school it says lee is a shy 14 year old when she leaves small town indiana for a scholarship at an exclusive boarding school in massachusetts and this is what i mean the gossipiness the salaciousness of like american politics is so possible to also evoke in a girls boarding school in new england i don't even know what it's about beyond that um i think it says it's about like the minefield of unstated rules the in incomprehensible social rituals i just think it's gonna be fun but she manages, like I say, she has such a light touch, Kurt Sittenfeld. She makes everything, to me anyway, 
that I've read so far. Just fascinating to read about and nice to read about. And it is a bit of a longer book and I haven't given myself the most time to do this, but I am so excited for this video because I'm so excited for these books. I'm almost there and that's gonna be a five star and Jez and Ward will be a new favorite author and prep. A little bit more scared, but I really hope that I love it because I just can see Kurt Sittenfeld again being a favourite author and I have a lot more to read from her if I like this. So that's the plan for this Vlogmas. Um, I have just finished work, so I'm actually going to pick up a book before Alex gets home. And then when Alex gets home, we're going to get our Christmas tree, which I'm excited about because this, this living room is looking very unfestive as it stands. So I'm going to pick up a book uh, and I reckon I'll start... Ooh, I'm going to start with Where the Line Bleeds, I think, and read this until Al gets home, and I'll let you know how I go. Oh, just turn my camera on. Hi! Hello. Hello. I've read the first third of Where the Line Bleeds. Oh, it's pretty dark in here. I thought I'd quickly do my little advent calendar first. I think I've got two days to open, so let's open day number five. It is an Urban Decrimer... Uh, urban Decrimer? Urban Decay All Nighter face primer i do like getting face primers in this stuff because it's something i would never purchase myself and i'm still using like last year's christmas ones i mean it's a teeny tiny little tube but nice 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 and then number six ooh, it's a little clinique cleansing balm which again is tiny but is cute well i don't know what this is but that's very cute yes so 80 pages into this and immediately loving it no surprise I just love the way Jasmine Ward writes. She does write in such a like lyrical way. Um, some might even call it like flowery way, but she matches that with, I think, such a like clear portrait of character and a very like real, almost like gritty subject matter that it just goes together beautifully. Like I feel like I'm just, I feel like I'm reading like something really poetic and I'm like, it's like languid if that's the right word. I'm just enjoying the writing. But then also like you get so much like content as well. And I mean, like it's a fairly quiet story so far. We're following two twin boys, Chris and Joshua, who are 18. They've just graduated. It's summer in Mississippi. They're raised, they've been raised by their grandma who is now blind because their mother like went off to Atlanta, I think. And their dad is a drug addict. Um, and so it's just very much about like them trying to find a job, but there's not very many jobs and they've always been very close. But now as often with the twin books, they're maybe encountering different paths, I guess, and dealing with that. Um, and yeah, like I say, a super quiet story, but the writing is just beautiful. The setting, the way she talks about, again, it's like the heat, um, and like the swampiness and the like long summer nights. I just think it's gorgeous. Um, and I'm excited to see where the story goes because basically what I've read so far was just what I'd got from the blurb, if that makes sense. Do you want a chucky? No, I'm all right. You don't want one? No. Ugh, rude. I want mine. So we can't get our Christmas tree tonight because everyone's shut up. I'm really sad about it. So I'm gonna have to get it on Thursday by myself slash with my dad because I can't drive. So yeah, the house is still looking very not Christmassy. I'm not happy about it. So I've been reading Where the Line Bleeds more and I'm now two thirds of the way. Ooh. I don't know why I'm trying to focus on my bookcase all the way over there. Yeah, I'm now two thirds of the way through Where the Line Bleeds and still loving it. I definitely think it's plot wise, like I say, like her quietest novel but i think that kind of makes sense as a debut i think the writing is just as strong across them all and the characterization is i would say that with like salvage the bones there's a bit more of a like there's a hurricane coming in sing and buried sing it's a bit more like they're going to see their dad in prison whereas this is very much like just the boys over summer um and i love the way she narrates it um particularly with like the twins, there's this sort of like interweaving narrative where on a page you'll move like seamlessly from being in Chris's mind to being in Joshua's mind with no like significant breaks or anything. It just like moves between it. And I really like the way that kind of builds this feeling of like their connection and the way they interact with each other. They are definitely drifting apart in terms of like how they feel about, not how they feel, feel about each other, but like drifting apart, I guess, physically in this book but their narration still works as like a whole especially because most of the issues that come up in this book they experience together so like issues with their parents with their grandma drugs are a big part of this book one of the boys kind of gets into selling drugs 
and it's giving me definitely more salvage the bones vibes in that that book is about like a group of teenagers really interacting across a summer and this is very much the same i think jesmyn ward writes that kind of like adolescence young adults really really well it doesn't feel i don't know it feels very like believable like the stakes are often high and like would be high for anything but then it's always got the undercurrent of like they are young people kind of trying to come into themselves um and yeah it just has this really like sort of slow meandering like the way a summer feels when it's stretching out in front of you um and you're just seeing the same people every day i think she writes communities really really well yeah i think the real like centerpiece of this novel is the relationship between the boys and it's done really beautifully i think this book might end up being quite sad at the end um and also like having read jesmyn ward's memoir about the men in her life who have died um due to various things but often like wrapped up in the fact that they're black men and the way society treats them i think that's coming out in here particularly like i say around like the drugs um and feeling like there's not much opportunity there's like real echoes of that in there um but yeah it's it it feels like a debut but in the best way like not because of the writing i just think in terms of me being obsessed with her i feel like i can like see where she's gone and i really really like that so yes thoroughly enjoying it i'm gonna read some more when i'm in bed and then I'm going to the office tomorrow. That's my current update on where the line bleeds. It's going well. It's definitely still a five star contender. I finished where the line bleeds last night and I loved it, but I have to go to work and it's snowing. So that's that. work today and then after work i met up with my sister my friend chloe and we had a really nice night we ended up in weatherspoons which i'm sorry but you can't knock their prices there's a current deal on called like winter i don't know winter deal you can get a large glass of wine for two pounds thirty which i'd ask you to bear in mind as you listen to me trying to share for the next how many minutes um and i got some food there got one of the festive pizzas brie and garlic mushrooms and i'm sorry again you don't expect the weather spoons to pop off with the food delicious and i also had a festive meal deal a little festive christmas sandwich for lunch had the cranberry and brie which is also delicious so i've been very festive in my food today if nothing else as you saw this morning i finished where the line bleeds last night and uh, jasmine ward is 100 percent a new favorite author i love her so much and it feels really i don't know nice that this year i read her novels for the first time and i've read all three of them so in january i went in january i read sing and buried sing and then i read salvage the bones in summer and i finished the air off with where the line bleeds i've gone backwards but i just think she is an incredible writer i love her books so much i can't wait for her next novel she is yeah absolutely up there one of my favorite authors of all time I'm like in awe of the way she writes. Salvage of Bones is still my favourite. I think it's an absolute new classic, but I loved Where the Line Bleeds. I thought the ending of it was so perfect, like without spoilers, obviously, the way that she, that kind of big ending scene, if you've read it, with the brothers and another character. It's such a like family story, such a quiet story, the way that she slowly builds up to what's going to happen. I think she's the sort of writer who can do the mundane so well and like all of the book most of the novels are small time close intimate family moments but when she brings the drama she brings the drama and it contrasts so much with the dreamlike prose and yeah it was just so perfect i feel like i want to live in her world although they're very sad and heartbreaking but i just love the way she writes so much honestly amazing definitely i think a five star book if not yeah, I think it's a five star book and she's 100% a new favorite writer. So that's very exciting. Um, and then I also picked up Prep, which is a very different vibe. I'm 100 pages in. I'm really, 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 sent. did I say enough really set? I'm really enjoying it. Like I say, a very different vibe because it's basically thus far a story about a young girl who goes to a really prestigious boarding school. She gets in on a scholarship and 
it's really different for her and it's really scary and there's all these like popular girls and she's like a little girl from indiana but as someone who spent all of her teen tween to teen years reading like high school based novels about like teenage girls making their way in life at high school this is like the perfect adult version of that you're at a boarding school you're following a girl but then the writing is just there and it's just so well written and i'm not gonna preempt myself i have to get to the end of this book before i make my judgments about curtis and Belt. and like i say i'm only 100 percent i'm only 100 pages in but i don't know it's just so like fun and light-hearted but really really well written i think that i'm hopeful that by the end of this video i'll be able to say like without a shadow of a doubt Kate sittenfeld is the writer you need if you want to read literary stuff and like adult i don't mean adult in like adult but maybe i have no idea where the story is going to go at all so maybe i'll get a bit adult but you know like next level stuff that reminds you of that carefree kind of very 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 much coming of age story novels about just like girls in boarding school and high school and yeah i'm really enjoying it i think this is going to be a super fun read i'm excited to keep reading it especially after like i love jasmine ward i love that novel but it's heavy in a good way and this is like light in a good way so i'm very very happy about it and yeah i'm in the office again tomorrow and uh, might even get the the other sainsbury's festive sandwich which is the salmon and cream cheese one you heard it here first she crazy um but yeah going into the office tomorrow and then also going out for drinks tomorrow night on a really cute little double date uh which i'm very excited about which i'll tell you about tomorrow because now i'm tired it's really stormy and rainy and windy outside and this bitch wants to go to bed but yes the reading in this vlog so far is chef kiss now thursday i didn't really speak to you yesterday because i went to work um and then it was quite fun actually i think i put a clip in we recorded like our christmas podcast because we have like a seasonal newsletter and recently since i guess like the pandemic me and my boss have started doing like a seasonal podcast to go out with it um i think we missed a couple this year but we did our christmas one it was really really fun and then went out straight after work with it was a funny little story had a really nice night it's a friend that i've literally known since i was like three we've always gone to the same school and then went to different unis and he never moved home but in the pandemic he moved back to newcastle and ended up living a couple of doors down from me and when we worked out we were like that's really weird to so me him alex and his girlfriend out for drinks in the village and it was so so fun and nice and felt like very festive so that was a really fun time jess the girl was like oh i've seen you've got a youtube channel like i love reading so i was like okay amazing i was like, i'm gonna start just like posting books through your list box whenever i find one that i think you should read so yeah that was really nice i did manage after that to sneak in some reading um and like i read when i was on lunch and stuff so i'm now like just over 200 pages into prep so i'm a little bit behind schedule i would have preferred to have maybe been at the 300 point as this vlog is going up tomorrow we will see but it is a quick read i do think i'll fly through it today and i'm really really enjoying it i guess there's not huge amount to say about the plot it's a very classic coming of age story following our main character lee and she starts as a freshman but as the book moves on it's moving like fairly rapidly through those four years so i think now she's like a junior um and we see her kind of character evolve she is a very interesting character she's not the most likable but she's not unlikable and i think she has that very like awkward teenage angstiness right um and i love like a campus novel i love a boarding school novel there's something so fun about this book there's something so like familiar about books set in high school and there's all these like funny little bits where they'll play like a game and everyone has to play the game and it's like assassin and also i think the character portrait like is very very interesting and it, it like i say lee's a complex character the relationships that she's having are complex and there's a kind of for she's kind of narrating it back about herself so you'll kind of be in her head but then you'll get the odd thing where it's like now when i look back to that moment like there's a teacher who's like 22 that she's having issues with and it's like 
now when I look back, like that's so young, which she felt so alien. And also the school as a concept is interesting. Alt is like a, it's called Alt. And it's like an extremely prestigious school filled with a lot of very, very rich, like old money rich, New York kind of Northeast families. Lee's there on a scholarship. Um, but I think there's, there's some interesting conversations being pulled out around like class, especially like a little bit about race and the kind of social hierarchy. I think it's really ticking my boxes. And yeah, just, just enjoying it. It's just fun and I like it. Um, so I'm wearing a Christmas jumper today. It's me able to see. And it's a very particular Christmas jumper because today I'm finally getting my goddamn Christmas tree. My dad's coming over at lunchtime, bless his heart, to help me get it. And then tonight, me and Alex will decorate it. So thank God, because this house is so infestive. This space is not inspiring to me as a Christmas person. Ooh, my dad's here. has been acquired here he is he is a big boy big bushy boy he's thick obviously he's not decorated yet he's a bit naked focus on me please i know you're the star of the show um yeah my dad took me to take him we just got him from like the seafront it's the same place we got it last year and the guy's so so nice and the tree's really cool it's definitely bigger than last year like wider let's hope we have enough lights and then when alex gets home after work tonight we'll put all the lights on and decorate it might have like a mulled wine oh, i'm just so happy so festively happy that we finally have our tree it's tree time we've got all our little things here focus please to put on the tree including well this little guy's not going on the tree he's going on the sofa got the lights the lights are always the boring bit but <sighs> and this little cute guy, little Larry, little Larry tree ornament. Okay, well, as you can see in the reflection, the tree is up. We've got Christmas songs on and mulled wine. It's really rainy outside, feeling very, very festive. You feeling festive? I am feeling very festive. Exciting. I've got like 60 pages left of prep, I think. So I might just sit here, chill, finish my book, and then I'll tell you the final result. And we'll see if I found two new favorite authors in this video okay so i finished reading prep and i loved it i really 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 enjoyed it i loved how long it was you spent so much time with lee kind of in her head and i think it did a really good job of like encapsulating that entire boarding school experience how insular it is um and especially with lee coming from like not a really rich background um the book was just clearly very interested in that and i think it did it very well it wasn't being overtly like boarding schools and privilege and richly people are a terrible thing but it was very like organically pulled through and it could be funny and it could be kind of scathing um and i think curtis Sinfeld is just so good at character studies and this is such a character study of lee a real like i say deep dive over four years and she's not a likable character at all like she can be really frustrating and she can be really hypocritical and really unkind but again like it feels real like the character is there she's real in my mind and she's a teenager we see her between the ages of 14 and 18 and i think that curtis sittenfeld does such a good job of writing about that time in adolescence like that particularly for lee but i think there's universality in it like crippling insecurity and just kind of self-indulgence and self-aggrandizing and and what you expect out of your life and there's just so many moments where i'm like oh just do it like Lee's such a passive character she never lets herself do anything she waits for things to happen to her um and it's frustrating but I get it and like she has this awful like romance and I don't know it was it really felt real and just such a perfect like every decision Lee made in this book felt completely 
understandable, believable what Lee would do, um, even when it was something that he didn't agree with or that was frustrating. And there was one quote that I turned the page down because I was like, oh, that's just such a perfect quote for Lee, but also a perfect quote for, as I say, those sort of like feelings of adolescence. They get a, a kind of career counsellor in senior year and there's two and everyone always says like, if you get the woman, it's for students who they don't think are going to go to an Ivy League, an Ivy League. And if you get this man, they're the students that are going to go to an Ivy League. And all the teachers are like, that's rubbish, that's rubbish. But every year it's the really smart kids who get Mr Hessard and the really not so academic or kind of ambitious kids who get um, Mrs Stanchak and she says the weird part of the assignments was that it actually surprised me not to get Mr Hessard sure I believe the worst of myself but not really I was always waiting to be proven wrong and I just think that's so perfect so this is a 4.5 definitely and she's done it Kurt Simveld is a new favorite author and as is Jesmyn Ward what a success this video has been um unfortunately I've read everything Jesmyn Ward's written now apart from an essay collection like an anthology she edited but I've still got more Kurt Simveld books to read one of which is actually Pride and Prejudice retelling and I think and Pride and Prejudice is one of my favorite books of all time so maybe I'll read that one next and she's got another one about twins so we love to see it thanks so much for watching I hope you enjoyed it I had such a fun time we're feeling festive we've read two absolutely amazing books let's chat in the comments about either of these books or your favorite authors or my tree let's chat about anything obviously i would love if you subscribed to my instagram my story graph will be linked down below and i'll see you in my next vlogmas bye, bye.